The Terminator survives this this blaze. I understand. Fact, yeah, that there his, it is. Yeah, here it is, right here. I'll zoom in, right yeah. there. So I understand that his exoskeleton or endoskeleton, whatever his his metal skeleton, would survive. Inside, maybe endo, get a little yeah, bit more malleable. But all those sensitive electronics and parts in there, what, is that gonna survive? His blaze. Great question. <clears throat> so. I guess my question is how much mass does he have? How much like thermal mass does he? Because it could be that he sl- heats up slowly enough that he's out of the fire in time. But otherwise, mm. yeah, you're exactly right. Like like the the T101 is not fully metal. Like there mm-hmm. are some some semiconductors. There are some rubber in there. I know there's a bunch of other parts, a bunch of inorganic so, stuff. So, and so, so are com- those able to survive the heat? Mm. So the computer parts could be quite protected inside the skeleton inside of like encased in the skeleton inside the skeleton. and it'll take a long time to heat those interior parts up but he does have like joints and actuators and different things and like eyes those are sensitive components that that's right have to be exposed they can't be protected that's right good point so anything that's out on the surface is getting heat dumped into it from the fire just right mm-hmm. now gosh yeah good point yeah, yeah, yeah so like even in his feet in his arms and his wrists mm-hmm. like there's, they're not just gears straight up, just grinding on, on gears. There's like grease in between the gears. And so mm-hmm. from this heat, like all that's going to either burn away or melt and then run away or become mm-hmm. hot and then like gummy. And like he's going to be right. effectively like arthritis robot, like just, just struggle right. bending any of the joints. And his eyes survive so he doesn't lose his vision. That's right. It's... All it would take is some heat distortion, just some heat distortion, and then those eyes don't work right anymore. That's right. And yeah, so is this a little so overpowered, so well built to be able to survive this inferno? Wow. That's right. Gosh, and now that its skin is all burned and Mm -hmm. fucked up, then um, all those gears are susceptible to like gravel right right That's so right. sarah connor like throws a fistful of sands at him and then he's like oh, oh my arm's stuck <laughs> that's right i mean we think of our skin as really not effective like easy to penetrate but mm. it's actually very very good at keeping our insides extremely i mean it keeps it sterile <laughs> we don't get infections through our skin so all That's the right. dust and particles and spores just they're outside of our skin all the time. Mm-hmm. He loses it. So now all the joints and lubrications and different things are susceptible to essentially dust and grit and grime. Gosh, I think what we're saying is that the machines are scary because they have like mm-hmm. steel and titanium structures. So like mm-hmm. we we know how hard metal is versus like our bones mm-hmm. and our skin. And so we're like, oh, robots are super strong. But actually like humans have their own distinct advantages like That's like right. for example for example like a ro- uh, machine what is it operating off of like in terms of energy it could be it could have some type of combustion is operating off of oil mm-hmm. it could be battery powered which it, it, which the power then comes from solar or or oil or from coal or something but if you take out any of those three sources then it's toast like it's a very short amount of time in which the entire robot army is just out of energy cannot operate right. whereas humans you we can we can eat a raccoon we can, we can eat a i don't know leaves or whatever like we we are surprisingly right. survivable in these situations yeah because our digestive system is quite adaptable the main things we would need is oxygen and clean water but even even clean water if you dial that back you say okay long term like we need to survive for the next 5 years at least i can drink dirty water it might not be nice might have right. long-term consequences for me, but immediately I'll survive. I mean, I think that's pretty doable, like in survival situations, getting clean water. Mm-hmm. It's not easy if you don't know what you're doing, but I, I mean, you can watch survival mm-hmm. people, they figure it out very easily. Right. Um, whereas robots, they need like, I need this oil. Like, oh, well, where does the oil come from? Well, it's a petroleum byproduct. Like, I mean, you go yeah. dig for oil. Like, ah, So here you go, here's oil. Oh, that's the, that's the wrong viscosity and different like I need this very specific type of oil. I don't have that on hand. Convert it, drink it. I can't convert it. Can't. Right. Whereas we drink like a, a, you know, like a slurry of sludge of, you know, carbohydrates and protein and our body just 
pulls them apart and distributes it around the body <laughs> as needed. That's like right. what? What is a protein shake? It's like a mixture of a bunch of stuff. And then your body's like, hmm, I need a little bit of protein here, a little yeah, bit of something there. there. <laughs> yeah, right, distribute. There you go. No Over problem. there. Done. Easy. How did oh, you just take them apart? We just, it just, it just knew. Yeah. For like, for example, gosh, even a car, like you need to have the right oils in the right places. You can't just right. pour it all into one spot and let the car figure it out. Right. The car doesn't have a mouth. That's right. It has, I mean, it has a gasoline hole, but it's only gasoline. And then it has an oil hole that's mm -hmm. only oily. It has other stuff that right. is only that. Like That's right. And very, very specific fluids. Like if you put the wrong fluid in, it doesn't just like, oh, I'll suboptimally mm -hmm. run for a certain amount of time. It'll just seize up and be done. Season broken. Yep. So, yeah. but, but the car is like clearly much stronger than a human body, mm -hmm. but it's also fragile in different ways. In different ways, yeah. Okay, okay. So maybe from, from, from the beginning of our episode today, we read that title card mm -hmm. where like, that description card where they're like, the robots have been fighting for decades. Like, okay, I guess, yeah. I guess maybe actually. Yeah. Because maybe. it's hard to kill humans because even though like an individual human is easy to kill, it's hard to get them all dead. And then humans right. can survive in like, really just weird climates weird locations they, they figure it yeah. out and the robots are just really sensitive to these like factories and supply chains and specific fluids and parts and and any of that gets screwed up they're struggling whereas a human like escapes to the mountains without a supply chain without factories and it's like eating figure leaves and you know, berries you know yeah acorns. and it's fine yep so hmm. okay hmm. okay okay this is uh, this is more more plausible than I thought. Yeah, maybe. <laughs>